For four months now, I've had this series going on where I chronicled the evolution of Disney Park Guide Maps. Well, today, I end that series with Animal Kingdom. Animal Kingdom's first guide map dates all the way back to the pass holder and cast member previews for the park before it was opened in 1998. The map was called the Adventurer's Guide and had the dates that the map were available in the park above the image. The front cover had a picture of two giraffes. Animal Kingdom opened on April 22nd. Earth Day in 1998. On opening day, there was an adventurer's guide, which, yes, I do have one. Here it is. On the cover of the map was carvings from the Tree of Life. A dinosaur, a rhino, a parrot, Rafiki, and a, uh, hippo, I think. All of those animals symbolizes something in Animal Kingdom. Like, the dinosaur is Dino Land, of course. The parrot is the Oasis. Rafiki is, uh, Camp Mini Mickey. Rhino is Africa for the safari. I don't know where the hippo would be. Probably the safari too. Animal Kingdom is split into seven areas. Oasis, Safari Village, which more on that later. Camp Mini Mickey, Africa, Asia, and Dinoland USA, plus the Conservation Station. Animal Kingdom is the first Disney park to not have the park's icon visible from the entrance. According to Joe Rohde, instantly establishing that this was a different place. The Oasis does capture the spirit of Animal Kingdom by being a garden of plants and birds. Safari Village is in the middle. This island has two dining locations, Flame Tree Barbecue and Pizza Safari, plus it's tough to be a bug in the Tree of Life. The Tree of Life Garden and the Discovery River Boat Stop. Camp Mini Mickey had two shows and a couple meet and greets. I have a full video on Camp Mini Mickey right there, but it had Festival Lion King and Pocahontas and her forest friends. Africa is the fictional town of Harambe. Tusker House is the restaurant in this land, plus one attraction, Kilimanjaro Safari. Gorilla Falls is also here. This is where the gorillas and other animals, like the Akapis, are here, and you can view them. Then there is the train to the Conservation Station. Conservation Station is now known as Rafiki's Planet Watch. You can go up there, meet some characters sometimes. There's also some animals and some vets, and they teach you about uh, conservation. Asia opened incompleted. In 1998, Expedition Everest was not open. So at the time, the only thing open was Flights of Wonder. Dinoland USA is the last land. This land wasn't fully opened either, and actually wasn't supposed to be open at all. But Countdown to Extinction was still open at the time, plus the Boneyard, and the 1998 Dinosaur Jubilee, which was just fossils in a tent. Journey into Jungle Book was at the Theater of the Wild. Early 1999 maps had previews for the new Maharaja Jungle Trek and Cali River Rapids in Asia. Maharaja is where the tigers are kept, and Cali is a water raft ride. Later in the year, the cover of the map was changed to a picture of the tiger to promote the new area. Even later in the year, Tarzan Rocks opened in the Theater of the Wild and took over the cover of the guide map. 1999 also saw the closure of the Discovery River Boats. I really need to do a video on this, but a brief description is, it was a boat on the Discovery River, that guests could ride on, but it's interesting because this is one of the few retired Animal Kingdom attractions and is also called one of the worst Animal Kingdom attractions, but I promise you I will do a video on that later. In 2000, Dinosaur opened in Dinoland. This fan-favorite attraction rethemed Countdown to Extinction. Michael Eisner wanted to promote the new movie and he decided to retheme the ride. Unfortunately, the movie is not that good. But the ride is pretty good. Something big happened in Animal Kingdom in 2001. The center island, where the Tree of Life is, was renamed from Safari Village to Discovery Island as a tribute to the island of Bay Lake that I believe had some influence in the, on the park. Actually, when the island initially closed, some of the animals on Discovery Island were moved to Animal Kingdom. 2001 was also Walt Disney's 100th birthday and Walt Disney World celebrated with the 100 Years of Magic. This resort-wide celebration brought many new things, like merchandise, a new icon, merchandise, new attractions, merchandising, parades, and merchandise. Also as part of the 100 Years of Magic celebration, Animal Kingdom got a new parade called the Jam and Jungle Parade. This parade is easily 
the best daytime parade, and the parade route is shown right here on the map. Most importantly, new map styles would be brought to the resort in 2002. Animal Kingdom's cover specifically had a picture of Timon and a random kid during the Jam and Jungle Parade. Above the picture, Animal Kingdom's logo and the words guide map is there. Plus, the new slogan, Not to Zoo doesn't actually mean anything, but it sounds like not a zoo because at the time, Disney, well, Joe Rohde specifically, wanted it to be known that Animal Kingdom is different. Not to Zoo was around until 2005? 2004, 2005. 2004, 2005, 2006, something like that, around there. Dino Land got an overlay in 2002. Chester and Hester's Dino-Rama opened. This included Triceratops Spin, and arguably the worst Disney attraction ever made, Primeval World. So this was, of course, added to the map. And the interesting thing is that there were originally carnival games where Primeval World was. Those were later moved, but this land again opened incompleted because Primeval World was not uh, open, so that's just interesting to me for some reason. The 2003 and 2004 maps were pretty bad. They folded horribly. This makes it way too big when you actually fold it out. They look like the Universal maps from like 2015. I don't know if they're still like this, but they were massive. Plus, they're literally the exact same map. 2006 was a huge year. Not only for Disney's Animal Kingdom, but for Disney World as a whole. Because a huge ride opened. You might have heard of it. That ride is called Expedition Everest. This 199.5 foot tall mountain is the tallest at Disney World and cost over $100 million to make. This fully opened the Asia area and help Joe Rohde become a Disney legend. I am fully aware that Joe Rohde was already a Disney legend at this point, and I know that Expedition Everest did not make him a f Disney legend. Also, above the Expedition Everest photo on the cover was the new slogan, Adventure Awaits. In 2007, my first trip, the Theory of the Wild got its wildly popular Finding Nemo the Musical, which is currently closed and being changed to Finding Nemo the Musical Big Blue and Beyond. The day that we were recording this, January 27th, we actually got a press release today that said Big Blue and Beyond will be announced later this year, in 2022. So I'm guessing Fantasmic is going to be early summer, Big Blue and Beyond will be later summer, fall, sometime like that. 2013 was the 15th anniversary of Animal Kingdom. And there were multiple variations of that year's guide map, including the Jingle Jungle Parade cover and the drop on Expedition Everest on the cover. But the most notable change is the change of style. To better fit the My Disney Experience virtual map, Disney World updated all of its maps to look like what they are today. I've said this before, but I don't like the maps today. I think they look bland and, yes, oversimplified. It didn't help Animal Kingdom that when they updated the maps, Camp Minnie Mickey closed to make way for Pandora. So one side of the map was just green. Africa changed on the map since they moved Festival of the Lion King to the Harambe Theater, since it can no longer be in Camp Minnie Mickey. But the wait was on for Pandora, and two years later, the map did include the new land. In 2017, the Imagineering masterpiece, known as Pandora World of Avatar, opened. Visible on the map was the are the amazing floating mountains and the map does not do this land justice just because you have to be in the land to fully experience this once in a lifetime land it is just incredible but across the park rivers of light was being built and getting ready to even though it was delayed multiple times open to the public the arena for the nighttime show was added in 2016 but the show opened in 2017. After Animal Kingdom opened back up in 2021, there was a picture of people with masks on. This was the first time people were pictured with masks on for a guide map, but it didn't last long because Disney removed the outdoor mask mandate. So if you have one of these maps, make sure to save it because it could be worth money someday. 2021 was also the 50th anniversary of Walt Disney World 
And on October 1st, they debuted brand new guide maps for all four theme parks. Animal Kingdoms has the Tree of Life, but it is shown as a beacon of magic. In the inside of the map is also a guide to the different offerings to do during the celebration, like cavalcades and the beacon of magic. So there it is, the fifth and final episode of the Evolution of Disney Park Maps. I hope you enjoyed this series. If you do, let me let me know by leaving a like. This whole idea actually started as a whole mega video. I was going to make a hour or an hour and a half video all about Disneyland guide maps through Animal Kingdom guide maps and how those guide maps evolved and cram it. I, I just decided not to do that. I thought it would be better if we dedicated each park to a uh, that park's guide map. And thank you all for your support on this series because every video got at least 130 views and got over 10 likes. So, you know, you guys definitely enjoyed this series. I want to thank you for that. So, as always, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you do, leave a like and consider subscribing. It would make me a very happy man. Be sure to stick around for the next couple of weeks. I will be posting the actual content videos that I did at Disney. And with that, I will see you in the next one. Have a magical day, everybody.